Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, I'm gonna give you all the tips and tricks when it comes to growing onions, in particular ones that are preservable, meaning ones you want to last a little bit longer in storage. So one of the secrets is actually making a bulb that doesn't suffer from any sort of bacterial issues. And then that comes down to the actual growing itself. So I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on what you need to do to ensure that that happens. However, first off, because I always forget to ask, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. It helps enormously with the algorithm and this channel in general. I always get the comment, this channel deserves to do better and have more subscribers, but I don't. So you guys actually supporting it and giving your free love is always much appreciated. So thumbs up video. And in return, I bless you with good onion harvest this year. So one of the tips and tricks when it comes to actually growing onions is to ensure that the soil has sulfur. Now, a lot of soils have sulfur in them. However, it's one of those nutrients that soil scientists are beginning to watch and think about how it's being depleted. This is particularly true for any sort of garden or farmland that is continually growing either alliums or brassicae species. So if you're growing brassicae, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, anything in that family or the allium family, such as onions, scallions, you name it, you want to supplement with some sulfur. So this can either be broadcasted on the soil surface, watered in or placed when you transplant. What I do is just a simple broadcast in a light incorporation with granular slow release. And I'll leave a link for what I'm using down below. Now, the second step besides the sulfur, which gives that onion its really potent smell, is actually watering. So onions need water. They are beat up of a ton of water and lack of water can allow for some harmful bacteria that actually can harm the preservability of that onion to move into the soil profile and ultimately the plant itself. So water on a continual basis. One really great way to ensure that there's always water available is via mulch. However, if you're using mulch, ensure that there are no weeds in between the areas and you are weeding despite the mulch being there. And I'll allude to why that is a little bit later on. For those of you that are container gardeners, do not shy away from growing onions from seed. It's totally doable and I do this in just a straight potting soil mix. It works wonderfully. The reality is with onions, they don't love competition. This means we need to remove those weeds for a few reasons. More weeds means a more biologically diverse rhizosphere, which also means more bacteria and ultimately, again, the potential to reduce the actual harvestability and storage ability of your onions. So there are several different forms of bacteria that can affect the storage ability of an onion ball, but I'm going to go over with you some of the main ones we typically see when it comes to onions in a garden situation, not in a large production situation. So the first one is Botrytis ally, which is the very famous neck rot that we tend to see on onions. This is a form of bacteria that actually winters or stays in our soil systems, meaning crop rotation is key. And I know this is heavily contrary to something like Eileen Ingram's um, microbiology based type format. However, it is kind of the truth when it comes to science. So in order to prevent that neck rot, we want to make sure we're rotating our alliums in total. This includes onions, scallions, and garlic being planted in a different area of the garden once every three years. You cannot manage this. Make sure to at a minimum plant them across the garden, the middle of the garden, and then back in the same spot to avoid this as much as possible. The next version of this is again a type of bacteria, Bortritis conidia. Botrytis canidia is what it is called. And again, it is something that overwinters in our soil and is actually spread via the wind. So the spreading mechanism is through something we call sclerotinia and it tends to, you know, go through wind movement. So if you are, for whatever reason, near a farmer's field or some sort of a pasture that is growing alliums, you may want to consider some sort of a barrier to avoid that wind transfer. Now, keep in mind, 
proper rotation is going to help to keep these forms of bacteria in control in conjunction with proper watering proper fertilization weeding and of course spooning so let's get into the rest of the video once everything is actually weeded out of the way such as this darn chickweed that likes to come back also this stuff is edible but it is a pain in the butt because it comes out of nowhere so one of the things you want to do if you're growing in soil potting soil you name it is actually remove any pressure away from the center of the bulb this is also called spooning typically you use a spoon if you're a soil scientist and a bit of a rogue such as myself you use your finger so what you want to do is actually carve away a little bit of space at the base until you hit the roots. That's the reason I do like to use my fingers because it allows me to feel where the base of the plant is and ensure that I'm not going too deep, but I'm able to get to the pure bottom of the plant, which I am at. Got a little bit of a wobble, but this will allow for this bottom port to swell without restriction. As much as possible, always try to transplant a little bit earlier. One thing to keep in mind is topping doesn't necessarily mean larger bulb formation. However, it can result in some tasty suppers that may occur. And if you ever want some supper ideas based out of preserves and actual garden harvesting, be sure to go follow me over on Instagram. Pretty much every night possible, I do post my garden harvest recipes for you guys to follow. Tonight, I made deep fried jackfish, also known as Northern Pike, with deep fried pickles. You do not want to miss it. I used fresh herbs, zucchini flour, you name it. It's delicious. So long as you're able to keep up with the water, introduce some sulfur fertilizer in any way, shape or form, and involve some spooning and weeding, you should be just fine. I will show you how to preserve these properly over on the second channel because I do want to try to keep the preserving homesteading side separate from the plant science and that sort of thing. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I will talk to you guys in the next video. Talk to you later. Bye. If worst comes to worst and you're noticing that there is poor storage of your onions, keep in mind you can just simply chop them up and dehydrate them, grind them and make an onion powder. Do not let your onions go to waste just because they are not preserving properly. There are many methods out there to help keep the onions edible and able to be used without them being the whole onion that we would preserve typically in a cold um, area cold room they're so outdated i don't even know what they're called anymore cold room um i store some stuff under my steps because that is like a design cold room but honestly i don't find the results that fantastic at all times